Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to DigiSpice Technologies Limited's Q1 FY22 earnings Zoom webinar. We have with us today Mr. Dilip Modi, the chairman of DigiSpice Technologies Limited, along with members of the senior management team. Before we begin, I would like to state that some statements made in today's discussions may be forward-looking in nature. The actual results may vary as they are dependent on several external factors. A statement in this regard has been included in the result presentation sent to you earlier. We will commence the call with Mr. Dilip Modi taking you through the operational and financial performance and, and touching upon the strategic imperatives of the company, following which we will have an interactive Q&A session. I would now like to invite Mr. Modi to commence the presentation. Over to you, Mr. Modi. Thank you, Gavin. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for taking out the time to join us on this quarter one earnings call this afternoon. Uh, this is the second call we are doing. Um, you know, earlier last quarter, we had done a call for last financial year. And this is, uh, I'm so glad that we get this opportunity to interact and engage uh, with many of you who may have joined us on the previous call and many uh, of you who have come for the first time uh, on this call to hear about our journey, where we are and where we are going. So I'm so glad that you could take out the time. Thank you so much for that. Um, I have put, uh, we have put together a presentation uh, for looking at quarter one results. Uh, some of the slides on this presentation also talk about the business model uh, that we are pursuing at DigiSpice Technologies for various segments of businesses. Some of these slides we did share in our previous presentation as well. So I must apologize up front for some repetition, but given that we are at an early stage of build out, we thought it will be appropriate for us to once again re-emphasize uh, and talk about our business models that we are chasing, uh, you know, in each of the segments within DigiSpice Technologies. So please bear with me on that. Uh, of course, we will talk through the quarter one numbers, uh, following which, as Gavin said, I would love to, uh, you know, interact with all of you in terms of some of your thoughts, questions, insights, uh, as well as suggestions that we can then build on in our journey going forward. So with that, uh, let me start the presentation. Uh, for quarter one FY 2022. Can we go to the agenda, please? So we will cover the two segments that we uh, have outlined for us as DigiSpice Technologies. One is financial technology services, our rural fintech business branded as Spice Money. And also briefly talk to you about our digital technology services business, which is at an early stage of build out, both for enterprise and specifically for telco. And we will close with a brief overview of our consolidated uh, financials. Uh, this presentation has also been uploaded on the exchanges, so you'll also get an opportunity to have a look at it from there. Uh, moving on, let's start. If I once again try and bring out as to our DigiSpice technologies, what brings us together and what we focus on, we are about building digital platforms and solutions. As a company, this is what we do every day, and basically in two segments. One is the financial technology services segment, where we are building out India's leading rural fintech platform, and we will talk in detail through that. Uh, at the same time, uh, we are at an early stage of build out in the digital technology services segment, where we work with telcos and other enterprises in the BFSI segment, not just in India, but across other countries in the region. Uh, just to give you a sense of the size of the overall operations that we run across these two segments, in the financial services segment for the financial year 2021, uh, we clocked a gross transaction value of close to 82,000 crores, which is about $11 billion. In terms of our enterprise communications platform business, we clocked over 9 billion messages that were sent using our platforms. And overall, as a company in the financial year 2021, we clocked a revenue of over 700 crores. So this is just to give you an overview on DigiSpice technologies and the two segments. Now, going into detail on each of the areas, we basically have called out three segments that we are focused on at DigiSpice technologies. Uh, one is digital rural, second is digital enterprise, and third is digital telco. Uh, let me start with our digital rural platform business, referred to as Spice Money. Can we move forward, please? So before I talk about the business model at Spice Money, 
it is very important for us to take a step back and understand the core problem that we are trying to solve at Spice Money. As many of you know, over the last several years, in fact, the last five to seven years, there's been a significant drive to get every Indian citizen access to a bank account. All of us know about the Jandhan Yojana of the government of India, and we have seen a significant number of customers uh, getting access to a bank account. While that has been happening very at a very rapid pace, what, however, has not kept pace is the growth in the last mile banking infrastructure when it comes to bank branches and ATM infrastructure of the banks. If you look at the ATMs per million population, uh, we are still behind the world average as well as many other countries around the world. And when it comes to semi-urban and rural India, this gap is even far more scarce. So in terms of wherever the bank accounts have opened, specifically for under and unbanked customers in semi-urban and rural India, the last mile banking infrastructure in terms of branches and ATMs is scarcely missing and has not grown in line with the accounts. Now, what we are using as technology stack to solve this problem is the Aadhaar enabled payment system. This has been part of the India stack strategy of Digital India of the Government of India. And we are very, very at DigiSpice excited about the Aadhaar enabled payment system platform. Uh, this platform is being used on the back of the fact that over a billion citizens in India have got themselves enrolled on Aadhaar and progressively many of them are linking their Aadhaar ID to their bank account. If you look at the projections for the Aadhaar enabled payment system um, industry as a whole, uh, it's projected to grow significantly. We have got some uh, third party report numbers here to show you, you know, where from FY21 about 2 lakh crore it's projected to grow to anywhere close to 10 lakh crores by FY25. Uh, these are third party reports. But effectively, the fact that over a billion people have their Aadhaar biometrics registered and now progressively majority of them getting connected to the bank account, this is a great stack for us to use to solve this problem of last mile banking. How do we do it? We have built out a Spice Money Adhikari app, which any merchant in small town and rural India can download from the Play Store, get themselves KYC and registered, and using a Aadhaar biometric device, which is also not too costly, be able to make customers in their communities and around them avail of ATM and banking services. So basically, we are converting a Kirana store in small town and rural India into effectively an ATM and moving forward a bank branch. So this is the core uh, solution on the back of which we are building out the Spice Money digital platform. And it's very important that as you think about Spice Money, you keep this core problem at the back of your mind in terms of the problem that we are solving and the solution that we have put out there to solve this problem. Moving forward, uh, let's talk about the business model. So as I said, you know, our platform is targeted towards entrepreneurs, merchants, Kirana stores in rural India who download our app as well as get access to our web platform to serve consumers in communities around them. So if you see on the left-hand side, uh, we have all our core services, basically in the banking and financial services space, where we tie up with banking partners, as well as other players in the ecosystem to enable their services onto the platform. And then through the merchant ecosystem, we deliver various kinds of financial and digital services to consumers in semi-urban and rural India. Because it is a digital platform, not only can it enable financial services, but also digital services. So we've broken out our product segments into two. One, what we call core services, which is basically around financial services. And the other is digital services. So when I talk about, e when you see here, e-commerce, travel, healthcare, government, these are all services that can be digitally integrated onto our platform and offered to the end consumer in rural India. Uh, some of the services we've outlined also on this page, our core services are more around cash withdrawal and cash uh, and uh, enterprise cash management. But effectively, as we are going forward, and I'll talk about this later, we're adding more and more services to our platform. What is also important to understand 
is that as we are rolling out this business deep into rural India, what are some of the building blocks of this business? The first and the most important is our ability to access and engage with millions of merchants, entrepreneurs, and consumers in semi-urban and rural India. As you know, the access of smartphone and internet connectivity is now going deep into rural India, and we've been able to build a product on the back of that growth. And so the ability to access as well as engage with millions of entrepreneurs and merchants in rural India is a key building block for our business. The second is through the transactions that happen on our platform, the ability to be able to access data, which can enable us to create products for consumers in rural India. As many of you know, one of the biggest challenges we have when it comes to financial inclusion is lack of data and therefore ability for banks to underwrite. So we have, we through the transactions data are being able to think around new products that we can build for consumers in rural India that we can make available through our entrepreneur ecosystem. And the third most important building block that we have in our business is an open API architecture. What this does is enable multiple players in different industries to be able to, through an API integration, integrate their services onto a platform and therefore be able to deliver it in an economically viable manner. And I think all of these three building blocks are core to what we are building out at Spice Money. Moving forward, I would like to share with you where we have, uh, what we have delivered in quarter one, starting this financial year. These are key highlights before we get to some of the key metrics. Uh, and these are the key metrics that we at Spice Money track uh, as we think about building the business. Uh, the first uh, most important metric that we look at is the gross transaction value of the business transactions that happen on our platform. For the quarter one 2022, uh, we, uh, we had a gross transaction value of 31,000 crores. This was a growth of 35% in GTV quarter on quarter and 65% year on year. Within this, uh, do you know, when we look at our revenues as a function of our gross transaction value, what is important to us is the transactions revenue that we very closely monitor and, and, and focus on growing. Our transactions-based revenue quarter on quarter grew from 155 crores to around 199 crores, which was a growth of 29% sequentially quarter on quarter and 56% year on year. The third metric that we track very closely is our growth in market share. As I also shared with you on our previous call, we are focusing on growth and market share growth is a key metric within that. Within the APS sector, basically in the office market, we have managed to grow our APS market share to 15.9% in quarter one FY22 compared to 13.7% in quarter four FY21. A fourth metric, and this is a new one that we've introduced on this call, we did not talk about it on the last call, is the fact that as we are rolling out this Spice Money Adhikari network deep into rural India, it's also important for us to look at what is the kind of repeat customer franchise that we are building. Customers who are constantly coming back and using our platform to transact because it also shows the robustness of the business model going forward. Just to share with you, the repeat customers that transacted on APS, which is our core product on the Spice Money platform, increased to 21 million customers in the year, uh, in the quarter of one FY22, compared to 17 million in the previous quarter. So this is also an important metric that uh, we wanted to bring out and share with you. And we'll talk a bit more about that as we go forward. As you know, last in the quarter four of FY21, we rolled out a significant uh, program wherein we removed the entry fees as well as reduced the monthly, uh, brought down the monthly rentals that we charge, basically to drive acquisition and engagement of our Adhikari network. So a lot of the growth that we've seen in this quarter was driven by that program that we ran in quarter four. Uh, and we believe that, you know, this has put us in a good stead for the year going forward. The other metric that we look at is, you know, our, our coverage. While we cover most of the pin codes in India, our focus is to get to as close to the doorstep of the consumer 
and therefore focusing on density. Uh, we've called out what we say dense districts in India, and we we track as to you know how we are growing our dense districts, which is one adhikari per thousand rural population. So our coverage when it comes to dense districts grew from 140 dense districts to 186 dense districts quarter on quarter. And finally, uh, you know, as we work deep into rural India, uh, we have also realized that, you know, when it comes to the challenges being faced by us and by the world around the pandemic, it becomes our responsibility to also participate alongside with the government in helping solve for this. And therefore, at Spice Money, we have launched our own platform called Coverage, which with the goal of in working closely with the government to drive vaccination deep into rural India. And I will also talk to you a bit about that as we go forward. So moving forward, let's look at the key metrics for uh, SPICE money. Uh, since we are obviously looking at quarterly numbers, unlike last call where we looked at uh, uh, for the full year, uh, we've basically looked at most of the metrics with respect to sequential movement as well as year on year movement. So if you look at the network, which is the fundamental basis of our growth, the Spice Money Adhikari network, we closed at close to 683,000 uh, Spice Money Adhikari, 6.83 lakh Adhikaris compared to 576,000 Adhikaris in Q4 FI21 and 319,000 Adhikaris in Q1 FI21. Uh, in terms of dense coverage, uh, as I mentioned to you, 186 dense districts compared to 140 in the previous quarter, but a significant growth over year on year compared to 48 dense districts in quarter one FY21. So as we are looking to build the business, our focus is to increase density in terms of getting the services as close to the doorstep of the consumer. What this Adhikari network growth has translated into is a GTV of 31,000 crores in this last quarter compared to 23,000 crores in the previous quarter and 19,000 crores in quarter one FY21. So if you look at it, this is approximately about 35% quarter on quarter growth as well as a 65% year on year growth as far as GTV is concerned. When we look at the market share that we are achieving in our code product, the AEPS uh, product, uh, what we have done is basically shown the three year trend because, you know, we would like to track this on an annual basis as to how we are progressing the market share uh, from an 8.9% that we were of the APS office market in FY19. We moved to 11.8% in FY20 to 13.7% in FY21 and we closed Q1 FY22 at close to 14, 15.9%. So, for us at Spice Money, uh, as we are scaling up the network, we are focusing on GTV growth as well as market share growth and making sure that, you know, we stay ahead in terms of, you know, console, uh, increasing our share of the transactions that are happening in this space. Moving forward, uh, you know, this is a new slide uh, that we have introduced um, compared to last time. Uh, just to give you a sense on how driven by the growth in the Adhikari network, we have seen growth in our core revenues because it is important to correlate between how our Adhikari network growth is impacting our revenue growth. So just to explain you this slide, because it's new, uh, the bars that you see are basically the, the number of Adhikaris for that quarter. And the red line that you see is basically what we called out as the service fee income or the service fee revenue. As you know, last time on the call, and maybe I'll explain later as well, we have divided the revenues of Spice Money into three segments, our service fee income, airtime sale income, as well as income from acquisition and devices. Uh, what we are focused on is driving transactions income. And within transactions income, what we've called out is the service fee income. So again, we believe that the growth of this income is very important to track to understand the overall robustness of our economic model. When we look at this number compared to the overall service fee income, as you see, there is a footnote where this does not include the subscription rental revenues, 
and one-offs you know that may have been provided or written back during the quarter so this is all an apple to apple comparison to be able to explain that service fee income without the rental income how is that tracked over the last nine quarters so if you see basically starting last uh, uh, financial year quarter 1 we saw a major growth in both our adhikari network as well as in our service fee income uh, this as i spoke about last time also was because when uh, the pandemic started and the lockdowns happened there was a lot of reverse migration a lot of people going back to rural but also more importantly a lot of subsidies flowing into semi urban and rural india and on the back of that we saw significant growth in adoption of the spice money app and the spice money platform and we have grown on the back of that over the last four quarters the second big growth that we saw was in quarter 4 closing last year where we drove this campaign on onboarding majority uh, a lot of our entrepreneurs onto our platform by reducing entry cost as well as monthly rentals and we saw a significant growth uh come in because of that also so it is for us a strong validation of the initiatives that we took in quarter 4 because that has led to the kind of growth in income that we've seen in quarter 1 financial year 2022 so for us what we have seen is a steady revenue growth uh over the last 9 quarters if i look at the cagr uh over the last uh 2 years quarter 1 Uh, of this year compared to quarter 1 of fy 20 21 and uh, quarter 1 of fy 21 to quarter 1 of fy 20 we have seen a cagr if you see the numbers of over 70% so we are in a in a growth mode and we would like to continue to look at you know growing uh, because of the opportunity in the market uh, to expand both the reach of our network as well as the depth of our network deep into rural india so i hope this helps you correlate between how the growth in the network is leading to growth of our core income stream moving forward i would like to talk to you about our repeat customer franchise because it is very important that as we are rolling out our adhikari network we are also able to track that how uh, there is a certain repeat end customer pro- franchise that is getting built so while our focus is on adding new adhikaris and new customers through increase in reach our core objective is to build a very strong repeat end customer franchise so again if you look at with the growth in the network that we have seen what it has translated into in terms of growth in our customer base transacting on the spice money platform so if you look at it uh, you know just between quarter 4 of last uh, fy20 to quarter 4 of fy21 to quarter 1 of this financial year we've grown from 6 million to 17 million to 21 million and i think just to explain when we say repeat customers it is basically looking at the number of customers that have transacted during a particular quarter who have also transacted in earlier periods so all these numbers that you see on these bars are representative of customers who've not only transacted during that quarter but have also transacted in earlier periods and i think that is uh the number that is very important to us to understand how we are building a captive consumer franchise uh using uh you know for for the benefit of our adhikari network and to help our adhikari network grow their business and grow earnings going forward moving on um you know this is a slide that i spoke about last time and i think it is at the core of our business model uh because as we focus on building out our merchant network adopting our platform and building out the customer franchise our main focus is on growing transactions because that is at the heart of the robustness of the business model going forward and it is a clear demonstration of the strength of the platform and the brand uh in the industry so what we are focused on if you can see the flywheel is basically growing the number of adhikaris on our platform growing the number of customers who are transacting uh do you know at the adhikari points driving number of transactions as a result of that and then based on that being able to garner insights using data and using those insights innovating and building new products and making them available on the adhikari platform to again enable them to be able to serve their customers with even more services so at the end of the day this becomes 
uh, um, a way in which we can grow more relevant products on the Adhikari platform, which can achieve two objectives. One, it can enable the Adhikari to grow their earnings on our platform, but more importantly, enable the consumers in their communities to be able to get access to services that they have not been privy to so far or have been underserved. While we are rolling out this business model, I would like to once again re-emphasize that we are a positive unit economics business model. So we are trying to keep our um, uh, you know, cash burn to as minimum possible. In fact, in this business, because we are positive unit, unit economics, we are able to generate internal accruals to be able to reinvest in innovation and network growth. We also have an operating leverage in our business. And while I'll talk to you through the numbers, while we've seen a growth in our fixed costs in the last uh, financial year, there is operating leverage that begins to play out in this business. And we've even seen it in this quarter compared to last. So there is uh, you know, both positive unit economics in our business model, as well as operating leverage driven by transactions growth. So again, a very core part of our business model uh, you know, is this flywheel and our focus on this as we roll out the business. Just to give you an example of some of the new products uh, that we've rolled out beyond AEPS on our, in our, on our platform, moving forward, please. Uh, these are the two new products that, uh, you know, we spoke about last time, but I just want to bring out the fact that, you know, we are constantly thinking about products that work for Bharat, for rural and semi-urban India. One of the core products is the micro ATM product. Uh, this is a very complementary product to the AEPS product, because in the case of AEPS product, the customer is using his Aadhaar to be able to withdraw cash. In this case, he's using his debit card, uh, which majority of the customers who have access to a bank account, while they don't have a credit card, they definitely have a debit card. And so in cases where they either do not, do not use their Aadhaar identity or uh, they do not have it on them or for some reason it does not work, they're able to use their card to also withdraw cash at the same Adhikari point. We at Spice Money have, have been one of the early movers in this product. And we have seen last financial year how we've grown 3x in terms of the cross transaction value on this product itself. So from 2,740 crores in FY20, we had a GTV close to 8,638 crores in the final quarter of last year. Going forward, our focus is to continue to drive device affordability to penetrate this market. As I speak to you, we've already launched uh, uh, a new device in the market, uh, which is at a far lower price point than the one we had last financial year. And with that idea, our goal is to make sure that you know a significant part of our APS adhikaris are also able to adopt and use this product to serve their consumers around them. So hopefully going forward, we'll be able to see growth um, also coming from this product. And the other one that I want to talk to you is about enterprise cash management. Uh, we've seen that a lot of enterprises, whether it's microfinance, NBFCs, um, you know, other NBFCs, logistics companies who work deep into rural India, have their representatives go and collect cash on a regular basis and go and deposit it at their branches, which are perhaps at a distance to the point of collection. Because we are rolling out our Spice Money Adhikari network deep into rural India, we are able to provide them with access to cash deposit points much closer to where their branches are, and therefore both reduce their cost of collection as well as get access to that money much faster because we provide for instant credit, uh, real-time credit into their account. So this is a win-win product for enterprises uh, as well as uh, uh, you know our Adhikari network because they get access to cash uh, and also with APS and mini ATM, it's a cash out product while enterprise cash management is a cash in product. So it also works beautifully in terms of being able to give access to our Adhikaris to cash that they can also disperse as part of their APS and mini ATM product. This is going to be a focus growth product for us this year, this financial year, and we'll be talking more about this in the quarters ahead. Uh, moving forward. Uh, again, I think from a vision point of view, uh, you know, it's very important for uh, us to understand that while we have built out on a business model, 
our vision is to be able to serve the consumers in rural india within rural india so our 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 goal is to ensure that customers living in rural india do not have to step out to avail of many services that can be digitally onboarded onto our platform and they can be served within the village within their community itself we've started with basic banking and payment services going forward our goal is to you know onboard many more services on the spice money uh, platform whether it's in the space of financial services government services healthcare or e-commerce services we truly believe that there is a great opportunity for us to ensure that through our spice money adhikaris we can serve people in rural india within their community and not require them to go out to get access to those services because we are seeing any industry which is building out a digital layer where through an api they can extend their services to consumers we are able to integrate those services onto our platform and there are many examples now that are coming out in this space so we truly believe that we have an opportunity to build a a, a platform which brings together people and technology to be able to serve consumers deep into rural india and do it in an economically viable manner so we are creating a model where product manufacturers in each of these industries are able to get access to millions of consumers in rural india in an economically viable way and that is the only reason why many of them have not been able to reach out to consumers in rural india and that is why many of them are unserved or underserved so this is a framework of our vision and as we roll out the business over the next a uh, couple of years we will make sure that we keep you updated as to how we are progressing on some of these segments finally i'd like to close before i get to the financials for spice money with our three growth levers if we can move to the next slide please uh these are our three growth levers and this is what we are focused on uh you know at spice money first is as i said growing our network of spice money adhikaris our merchants our entrepreneurs we've already started taking steps in that direction and is translating into the growth numbers that i showed you our goal is to not only extend extend our reach but also deepen our presence in key clusters our second growth lever is around expanding services of course to begin with strengthening our core banking and payment use cases and adding new products some of which i spoke about but also going forward enabling delivery of financial services as well as other ser- services in the digital uh, uh domain and finally and most importantly from a competitive differentiating point of view we are very conscious of the fact that we are working in the financial services industry where trust and goodwill is very important consumers need to trust the platforms that they are engaging with entrepreneurs need to trust the platform they are engaging with because it involves money and so for us it's very important that as we develop a very robust uh, platform uh, to enable transactions to happen at scale we also ensure that we build a brand that consumers can trust and ensure that they know they they can build a relationship with going forward so we do aspire to build the most trusted and most admired fintech brand for rural india and we hope that you know we'll be able to continue to move forward in our journey towards strengthening the brand engagement with both our merchants and consumers in rural india and finally before i close the section on spice money let me share with you the financial numbers on revenue and ebitda again for the sequential quarters as well as the year on year quarters um if you look at the revenue overall for spice money we closed last quarter at about 202 crores compared to 159 crores in the quarter previous and 132 crores the year before uh this signifies a 27% quarter on quarter growth uh within this if you look at the segments uh you know the service fee income is basically 69 crores compared to 57 and 42 crores in the previous quarter while the airtime sale revenue is 130 crores compared to 98 and 86 crores in the previous quarters when we think of transactions revenue we look at both service fee income as well as airtime sale income but our focus is to make sure while we grow both i think the service fee income is our main focus in terms of the commission income that we earn from the transactions and this is something that we will continue to focus on as we go forward in terms of ebitda uh you know quarter 4 fy21 we reported a negative ebitda of close to 2 crores about 1.6 crores negative 
this quarter we've come in at spice money at uh, you know around 3.8 crores which is close to 4 crores this quarter uh so if you look at sequentially we've improved on our ebitda and basically this was on account of one of the points that i explained on our last call that we had significant expenses that we undertook uh, you know in quarter 4 uh you know towards the campaign that we ran which were not of a recurring nature but also importantly the growth in the network that we saw which translated into growth in revenues on transactions has also flown into the bottom line uh you know uh, in terms of ebitda however when we look at year on year uh you know we while we uh, came in at 4 crores in quarter 1 this year we were close to about 10 crores about 9.9 crores in quarter 1 last year and that is because of a point that i made to you earlier which was that you know when the pandemic started we saw a significant uh, growth in adoption of our platform uh, you know driven by a significant bump up in subsidies which were pandemic related and as a result of that it was like a windfall wherein the whole thing just came to the bottom line over the last one year we have now built on this uh, you know opportunity that we got in terms of the growth in the in the network as well as the uh, uh, transactions and we have effectively now focused on investing behind this growth both in terms of you know making the platform a lot more accessible but also in terms of building organization capacity and capability so for us what we want to build is a sustainable long term business and therefore we are making we made sure in the last one year that we focused on building up the organization which can handle scale and growth going forward so with that uh, you know i'd like to close on the section on spice money uh there is a social uh initiative that we have taken on at spice money as i mentioned you know for us uh you know we are deeply vested in the rural ecosystem we want to make sure that we are evolving with the rural consumer we are serving them in all ways possible and what could be more important at this stage but to ensure that we are able to protect and take care of each and every person in uh, the areas that we function in so one of the things that we are do- we are doing is we've partnered with the covin initiative of the government of india some of the challenges that we've seen in rural india when it comes to uh, covid related vaccination are principally around four one is around the lack of awareness around vaccine registration as you know registration is basically more driven by walk-ins in rural india um, the covin platform because of access to digital is very much limited and so there's also a, a lack of awareness while uh, you know the government is doing an amazing uh, you know tremendous job in you know in an outreach program uh, you know this continues to be a challenge the second and perhaps a bigger challenge that we have in rural india is skepticism to the vaccine uh, there are lots of myths that people have around the side effects of this vaccine and it is very important that these myths be removed and people you know in large at large you know get comfortable to take the vaccine the third is the need for community influence to drive action and the point number 2 and 3 are connected because at the end of the day you know the trust and the uh, you know the belief that they have within their community it is very important that you know we are able to you know reach out to people in the community with influence to be able to drive action and give them knowledge uh, right to remove some of these myths that exist when it comes to the vaccine and finally you know the need for an assisted registration platform so keeping in mind some of these challenges we at spice money have built out uh, our own platform to to tackle this which is referred to as coverage uh you know which is basically with the objective of driving registration and vaccination uh we rolled this out uh, you know earlier last quarter and already uh, you know we have seen that we have been able to onboard over 11000 volunteers who've downloaded this app that we've launched the coverage app and the idea is to be uh, we've got them first registered on our platform and then we're going to make them download the app and the idea is that through these volunteers we want to reach out to their communities around them and they can use this app to get people registered on the covin platform as well as drive walk-ins into the vaccination camps being set up you know at a district level by the government of india uh, the coverage app uh, you know will go live today 
uh, you know, uh, bit, effectively, I would say we'll go live this week between uh, today and tomorrow. And that will give an opportunity to many of these volunteers who've registered on our platform to be able to download and use this app to get their communities registered and vaccinated. So this is a huge program for us at Spice Money, and we are deeply committed to protecting, uh, you know, citizens in rural India. Uh, going forward, uh, let me talk to you briefly around some of our other digital platform segments that we are building out, starting with, uh, you know, our digital enterprise business. Again, something that we launched last quarter. So this is at a, at a very early stage of uh, build out and roll out. Um, a platform referred to as Pareto. Uh, uh, this is basically, you know, operating in the communications platform as a service space. Uh, this is a product we rolled out uh, uh, last quarter. And we truly believe that with, uh, you know, the growing digitization, especially in the MSME sector, there is a huge need for platforms that can enable enterprises, both large and small, to be able to effectively communicate with their customers. So keeping uh, that in mind, we rolled out this platform just to share with you briefly on the next slide around the industry that we have entered using Correro platforms. We have seen that, you know, over the last two years, especially, there's been a significant growth in adoption of digital channels. And this industry referred to as CPaaS, Communications Platform as a Service, has seen significant tailwinds in terms of adoption. And uh, we, have, we have various projections by third-party research in terms of growth, uh, expected in this industry. Um, a lot of this is driven by enterprises wanting to, you know, engage with platforms to better engage with their customers. A lot of the engagement today is using mobility channels like SMS, uh, but going forward, other digital channels like WhatsApp and, and, and other social media platforms are also going to be used by enterprises, again, small, mid and large, to be able to effectively communicate with their customers. What we've also observed is a growth in automation, right? So when it comes to, you know, marketing automation or other, other automation on our platform, uh, we believe that, you know, this is also something that is significantly going to grow in the future. So at Carrero Platforms, we are very much focused on participating in this industry. Uh, just to share with you where we've reached so far on the next slide, please. Can we move forward? Uh, while we've launched this service uh, only last quarter, as part of our enterprise mobility business, we've been serving uh, 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 a certain client base, specifically in the banking, financial services, insurance, and utility segment. We have over 60 customers, uh, and we serve some very large enterprises. You know, in fact, three of the top five in the Fortune. India 500 2020 list uh, are our customers. Our goal is to build out an omni-channel communications uh, platform and all the features that we are rolling out is basically to enable enterprises to be able to create a better connect with their consumers and engage with them both on transactions, marketing, customer service. So basically the CPaaS platform is sitting at the core of many of the automations that we are seeing around it in terms of marketing, contact center automation, Salesforce automation. So we are very keen to see how we can participate and help grow this segment. And uh, the experience that we've had working with merchants in rural India, we have seen how many of them have started using WhatsApp to engage with their customers. So we believe that, you know, use of digital channels is going deep into rural India. And therefore at Correro, our goal is to make sure that, you know, we can build on these evolving consumer trends and be able to reach out uh, to enterprises uh, do you know, who today don't have access to these tools uh, to be able to serve and communicate with their customers more effectively. Uh, one quick update that I would like to share with you within this industry, uh, which was uh, a new development in quarter one this year, which has had an impact, but, uh, do you know, for the quarter, but it is definitely something very good for the industry going forward. Can we move to the next slide, please? Uh, in quarter one FI 2022, what we saw the regulator uh, rollout was this new platform. Uh, in fact, it's, it's on, built on the blockchain technology referred to as distributed ledger technology. And the basic goal, uh, you know, if I just remove the technology terms are behind is to basically ensure that, you know, we are able to stop spam, which is basically 
you know, unsolicited messages going from enterprises to customers. This is a very customer friendly policy that has been brought in by the regulator and is being implemented by all the telecom service providers. If you see point number two, under these guidelines, the enterprises are now required to register their customers, uh, you know, in order to make sure that, you know, the customers are not bombarded with unsolicited uh, messages. Uh, this this whole technology is being implemented in phases starting from April 1st, 2021. Uh, what this has done in the initial period is because enterprises are still getting onboarded, enterprises are still whitelisting the templates on the platform, uh, and this is a journey that will take. Obviously, it has led to a decline in the business because, uh, you know, the number of uh, messages being sent out has significantly come down. Uh, we at DigiSpice observed a 25% reduction in the total SMS volume quarter on quarter. And this has also played out in revenues, as I will show you later. Uh, also, we believe that, you know, this is a sequential implementation of this uh, DLT technology. So, you know, while the first phase happened last quarter, the second phase will be happening this quarter, where from registering the templates, they will be moving into user consent management, all being driven on the guidelines of uh, outlined by the regulator, by the telecom service providers. Uh, we at Carrero Platforms, being a, a new startup, have, have built out a completely DLT compliant platform to support enterprises in their communications requirements. So we believe there's kind of a reset happening in this space. And as Carrero, we've, of course, come in as a new player, uh, building out a completely DLT compliant platform to make sure that we can support all our enterprise customers existing and new in not only complying with this regulation, but also making sure that we can make the journey as seamless as for them as possible so that they can effectively communicate with their customers, uh, you know, with proper consent in place. Uh, Moving forward, very quickly, I'll share with you, uh, you know, what we are attempting in the digital telco space. A lot of this is being done in emerging markets outside India. Um, as you know, and something, again, I spoke about last time, uh, you know, with growing digitization, which has significantly got accelerated with the pandemic, we are seeing significant growth in consumption of digital content uh, driven by high internet penetration, um, you know, as well as a whole new digital content ecosystem that's getting built out again, which has got significantly accelerated in the last 12 to 15 months. Um, the numbers show that now over 60% of the world's total population has got access to internet. The hours that people are spending online on, on internet is just growing. Uh, a lot of that demand is coming on, on video. So video is really driving data consumption and driving content consumption. And what is also driving a lot of this consumption is the need for personalized experiences. So effectively, if you look at it, you know, digital content consumption is on a growth curve. And if you look at telcos, whether in India or globally, they are actually very well placed to deliver digital content to their users. So a lot of the high bandwidth infrastructure that telcos are building out 4G or 5G around the world, right, is very much capable of serving uh, as 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 infrastructure to deliver digital content. So you see a lot of content innovation happening in the digital space um, because uh, for many consumers, this has become not only the most preferred, but the only mode to get access to content, um, you know, which is through digital. So at DigiSpice Technologies, uh, if you move to the next page, please, uh, we have access to over 25 uh, telco clients in the region. If I say region, I'm basically talking about South Asia, Southeast Asia, Africa, and Middle East. You know, this whole belt, uh, you know, of emerging markets, uh, uh, you know, in the region. And we, because, you know, we've historically at DigiSpice worked with many of these telcos in what we call the telco vast business, value added services business, as many of them are evolving to becoming digital networks, as many of their consumers are evolving to becoming digital consumers with access to smartphones and internet connectivity, they are all looking for digital content and digital services. And we at DigiSpice have called out some offerings that we are working with them, uh, you know, around digital entertainment, digital service aggregation, as well as the whole area of self-service. So we have seen a significant adoption of, uh, uh, you know, uh, digital content and there are many telcos with whom we've been working on a lot of products in the entertainment space. And now 
you know, going forward, we are focusing with them to, you know, onboard the same, uh, you know, from traditional value added services to more digital content led value added services. Uh, on the next slide, I'll just give you an overview on some of these, some, uh, some of these products that we have in the digital entertainment space. So if you effectively see in digital entertainment, there are three categories, uh, you know, music, videos and gaming, um, you know, and as we speak today, uh, uh, the revenues that we are seeing are broadly more skewed towards music uh, products. Uh, so, you know, we work very closely with telcos in the region to roll out uh, white labeled uh, digital music streaming products for them, uh, uh, you know, and significant parts of our revenues on the digital telco side are coming from music. Uh, but going forward, our focus is on videos and gaming because we believe that the innovation that's happening in the video and gaming ecosystem is significant in nature and we have built in the pipes and the infrastructure to be able to you know reach out to consumers in many of these markets working with the telcos in that region uh, to be able to give access to consumers to videos and gaming on their smartphones and using the digital infrastructure rolled out by the telcos so again this is a new uh, trend that we are seeing uh, but the future consumer is very clearly a digital consumer in every part of the world. And, you know, we see many markets in Africa also adopting, uh, you know, digital products very aggressively. And we at DigiSpice Technologies have a unique opportunity to be part of that journey. Uh, so this is at a very early stage of build out. And, uh, you know, over the course of the year, as we progress on this business, uh, we'll be sharing with you how, what are some of the milestones we are seeing and what some of the, you know, products that we are able to roll out and, you know, what are the learnings that we are getting from there. Moving forward, uh, you know, like I said, uh, you know, the digital technology services business is, is at a very early stage. We are in a startup uh, mode and therefore, uh, you know, the numbers are still building out. Our focus right now is to roll out, uh, you know, uh, get more enterprise customers on our Corero platforms, get more telcos to engage with us on, on, on you know, building digital products for them. So while we are seeing, uh, you know, the digital telco revenues picking up, if you see quarter of one this year, you know, three crores compared to two crores in the previous quarter and one crore in the quarter one FI21. These are small numbers, but effectively behind them, there's a lot of rollout happening in terms of products and the revenue models are still evolving. Uh, the drop that we've seen this quarter has been mainly in account of the enterprise mobility revenues. Uh, 17 crores from 22 crores. This is close to a 25% drop, uh, which is in line with what we saw as the drop in the SMS volume uh, that I spoke about earlier, which has mainly been because of this implementation of this new technology and the blockchain, uh, you know, by the regulator and by the telecom service providers. And that has led to an across the industry dip. And, uh, you know, obviously our numbers got affected. Despite that dip, we've held on to our uh, you know, revenues because of the growth in the other numbers. And so we closed at about 26 crores quarter one compared to 27 crores sequential in the previous quarters. Uh, in terms of EBITDA, uh, we are still negative EBITDA. If you look at on a quarterly basis, last quarter, we did about three crores negative uh, from the digital technology services business. It was, it increased compared to the previous quarter, mainly because of the impact of the DLT implementation uh, again, like I said, our focus is on, on build out here. Uh, so we will definitely try and minimize, uh, the losses going forward, but our focus is to drive adoption of our platforms, both for enterprise, uh, as well as telco. So as we move forward, I'll be able to, uh, show you more insight. And as this whole digital technology services segment grows, uh, we'll be able to talk in more depth the way we are talking about our financial technology services segment. So let me close. Um, you know, with our uh, a quick overview of our consolidated financials, our three key numbers around revenues, EBITDA and uh, PAT. Uh, so if you look at it, uh, uh, you know, we have closed quarter one FI22 at 229 crores revenue compared to 186 crores in the previous quarter and 167 crores uh, in the quarter FI20, FI, quarter one FI21. If you see sequentially overall consolidated, it's a 23% growth quarter and quarter and about a 37% growth year on year. 
In terms of EBITDA, uh, you know, compared to a three crore negative last quarter, we came out close to one crore positive um, this quarter. Uh, so this is something that, uh, you know, we saw, uh, you know, a turnaround in terms of the EBITDA number itself. Uh, and on the profit after tax, we came at about close to two crores loss compared to four crores loss uh, in the previous quarter. So once again, uh, let me uh, close by saying that our focus continues to be on growth and innovation. Um, At Spice Money, our focus is on network growth, product innovation, uh, transactions growth, and making sure that we can, uh, you know, drive uh, Adhikari earnings on our platform and be able to serve more and more consumers in in rural India. So we will continue to be uh, driven by growth. uh, But since we have a positive unit economics model, I'm hoping that you know, we will have the benefit of operating leverage that will play out in the future. But I would really uh, you know, urge you to think of us as a company in a growth mode and making sure that you know, we can focus on, on network uh, and uh, innovation uh, to be able to build out a very strong and relevant business uh, deep into rural India. Uh, so with that, I would like to thank you for your patience and for your uh, time. Uh, you know, to hear me on this presentation. Uh, before I move to Gavin and the Q&A session, uh, let me introduce you to the management team uh, we have with us uh, on this call. Uh, most of them were there with us on the last call. Uh, you know, we've had we've had one new member who I'll introduce to you on this call. So very quickly, I'll just go around the table. Uh, we have Vishal, uh, you know, who heads our digital telco business. Uh, again, like uh, last time I mentioned, Vishal joined us from Mahindra Com Viva and is very much driving adoption of digital telco, specifically in the Middle East and Africa market. Uh, Sanjeev, who joined us from Geo Financial Services, is the chief executive officer of Spice Money, the rural fintech business that we are rolling out. Uh, Meghraj Botra, he's the chief sec- uh, company secretary and chief compliance officer for Digi Spice Technologies. Uh, Vinit is the chief financial officer for Digi Spice Technologies. Uh, Vivek Venkatesan is the new uh, member on the team, uh, joined us very recently. Uh, Vivek has joined us from Geo Financial Services and has had tremendous experience in the financial services space, both in India and abroad. So it's great to have Vivek on board. And he's uh, uh, joined us as the Chief Financial Officer for Spice Money, our rural fintech business. Uh, Rohit is the executive director on the board of DigiSpice uh, Technologies. Uh, Rajneesh is the chief innovation strategy officer and is also, uh, you know, heading investor relations. So you'll be hearing a lot from Rajneesh in the quarters going ahead, um, you know, and he will help, uh, you know, uh, connect us in terms of your questions and, and work through together. Um, Anuj is heading our digital enterprise business joined us from InfoBip uh, last year and is helping us drive the business there. And then finally, we have Sunil. Sunil is the executive director on the board of Spice Money and is heading group finance for the overall group at DigiSpice. So with that, I I have the entire core team with us on the call. Uh, I'd like to now hand over to Gavin to start the interaction process. Gavin, over to you. Thank you, Dilip. We now open the floor for question and answers. Uh, You have the option of either uh, raising hand and uh, voicing your question, or you could put it in chat. My name is Gavin Bisa, Gavin, and you could uh, text, the, uh, text the same to me. I request if your, if your name is called out to unmute yourself, and then you could ask the question. Uh, we will start the questions. Uh, first, we have uh, uh, Pritesh Chedda. Pritesh? Yeah, sure. yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, from the presentation, uh, you know, in, in the last presentation that even you know, I was uh, a part of it, uh, currently, what, so when, when it comes to the cost of materials which we get reported in the PNL, so what kind of services today are offered on the DigiSpice uh, and what is the gross markup that we get on the DigiSpice? Uh, let's say the spice money part of the business, the fintech part of the business, what services do we offer uh, as of now via the Adhikaris? Uh, and uh, at what scale and size do you think that, uh, you know, we'll actually start generating a cash flow, better profitability on the fintech side of the business? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Pratesh. Uh, so just talking about um, 
uh, spice money, um, you know, there were two points you mentioned. One is, I think you're referring to, uh, you know, the cost of goods and services, right, uh, within the PNL. Yes. Uh, so I think uh, just to share with you the way we look at, uh, you know, the revenues, gross margin, EBITDA, and PAT of spice money, our fintech business. If you see the revenues split up, we've shared, right? Basically coming out of service fee, uh, airtime and device and acquisition, but basically transactions driven revenue, right? Now between revenues and gross margin is basically a lot of payout that we have to our channel, right? So if I look at the cost of goods and services, it's basically the channel payout that we have. And, uh, that is what, uh, you know, then finally leads us to the gross margin and the EBITDA, the services that we deliver are, of course, to, uh, you know, basically around the cash in, cash out services that we offer on our platform. And each of those services have a different value chain margin, uh, you know. So that reflects in our revenues. And effectively, the gross margin is coming out of, you know, the payouts that we have to our partners and adhikaris on our platform. Uh, so, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, going forward, uh, what we believe is that, you know, in terms of operating leverage, we have seen a significant growth in fixed cost, Pratesh. If you look at, uh, you know, our indirect overheads uh, year on year, we've seen a growth in our indirect overheads, right? And a large part of that, in fact, a significant part of that is on account of spice money. And what we've done there is basically invested in our sales and marketing infrastructure uh, because of the growth in our Adhikari network that we've seen. We've also rolled out a sales organization on the ground uh, to be able to engage with these Adhikaris to drive deeper engagement. Uh, we believe that these costs will not scale in line with transactions and revenue. And that's how the operating leverage in this business uh, will play out. Uh, we are still, uh, you know, in terms of rollout uh, on dense districts, we've still got headroom Pratesh to roll out. You know, like I mentioned to you that on the dense districts, we're close to 200 compared to 700. So there is still an opportunity to go deeper into rural India. And some of that will translate into uh, the need to invest, you know, in the sales organization on the ground. Uh, but other than that, I think the majority of the costs will more or less remain, uh, you know, um, uh, steady. So I think that, you know, basically transaction growth will lead to service fee income growth, will flow into absolute margin growth and will flow into EBITDA, uh, you know, wherein the major, major cost escalation on indirect overheads will happen with respect to sales, marketing and some level of technology led investments. So there is operating leverage uh, benefits uh, that will play out in this business model going forward, Pradesh. So when we report the GMV, uh, where does that link up with the revenue? So so basically, you know, you've got both the numbers there. So if you look at the uh, GTV number, uh, Pratesh, like for this last quarter, we did about 31,000 crores, right? As the GTV, right? right? And then we have the... Uh, service fee income and why I'm calling out the service fee income is because that's, you know, significant part of our margin comes out of that income, you know, in terms of absolute margin. So that's why we want, uh, you know, focus on that. Right. So if you look at the service fee income, it's about 69 crores. Right. So you, you, you know, you can connect between the GTV and the service fee income. Right. Okay. And so, so effectively, if you look at the three quarters, Pratesh, uh, and, and plot the GTV and the service fee income, you'll, you'll get a sense as to how the two numbers are correlated. Effectively, it's about, you know, 20 to 22 pips, you know, in terms of the income as a function of GTV. Okay. And, and then, then and then when you flow down, you know, significant part of the absolute gross margin of spice money is coming out of the service fee income, you know, close to even, you know, as high as, you know, maybe 90%. Of our total gross margin is coming from service fee income. So while we are not giving breakup of these numbers on gross margin, because we are still in a product rollout mode, Pratesh, and uh, you know uh, it's a bit early right now because we are more driven by growth of network and transaction and income from there. So what I would encourage you to look at is the growth in the absolute income of the business, and then you know while we report income and EBITDA. You know, over time, we will start looking at gross margin as the product mix stabilizes, you know. 
so but, but you can connect the you can connect at least gtv to revenue and then of course you have the ebitda at an absolute level so basically out of 22 bips that you collect as revenue you tend to pay out something as cost that cost is paid out also to adhikaris or adhikaris and and partners distributors okay. you know who who on board uh, the adhikaris and help us in driving engagement so just on that second part of that first question uh, in the gtv of 31000 what is the bulk of the gtv coming out of from what kind of transactions are they coming out because there's a whole wagon so the two the, the biggest uh, sorry sorry pratesh the biggest transaction pratesh is aps aadhar enabled cash withdrawals yeah. other than that other than that it is mini atm micro atm so uh, we showed that number for example 8000 crores last year okay. was micro atm so the two biggest products are aps and micro atm right and then so uh, uh, sir so that two products even last year was out of 80000 gdv i think those two were 21 plus 8 so about 30 i was wondering what is the other 50000 crores uh, so it's those together were close to about 40000 but uh, pratesh what what when we talk about total gtv there are two elements to the gtv one is the customer gtv the other is the adhikari gtv right so the transactions when we talk about transactions on our platform the customers are transacting and um, you know generating a certain transaction value but also you know there is transaction that the adhikaris also do on their platform right so there is so when we look at total gtv in the industry we look at both numbers right but just to give you a sense as to what is the main product pratesh which is driving the gtv it is basically the cash withdrawal product because both aps and atm and all the adhikari gtv is also mainly linked to the product the new product streams that are coming on is the enterprise cash management travel uh, you know and other products like uh, remittances that we are building out on the platform uh, but it is led by cash withdrawal Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Pradesh. Thank you, Pradesh. We have the next question from uh, Rishu Dhawan. Rishu, if you could unmute yourself, please. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, Rishu. Can yes. hear you loud and clear. Please go ahead. Okay, great. So, first of all, I would like to say thank you, and I would like to appreciate the kind of culture we are having that. we are connecting with the investors via con call and we are being given the opportunity to to understand more about the business and hear directly from you mr modi so congratulations and thank you very much for that uh, about questions so i had the question which was answered mostly from what you explained a while ago so my question is being addressed i have another question that is with respect to the correro platform how do we see that platform business panning out in the future would you like to share some kind of perspective in terms of absolute number that okay uh, this is the revenue we are trying or we are aiming to generate down the line two years down the line three years down the line and the kind of profitability margins we have into that business so thank you thank you for your interest rishu uh, thank you for 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 uh, you know sharing sharing your thoughts uh, so rishu on correro you know let me first tell you what excites us right so what we have seen rishu is that if you look at the enterprise landscape uh, to begin with not only in india but around the region right a lot of enterprises now are wanting to engage with their customers uh, you know both through mobile as well as digital channels right um, in india itself if you see we have over 65 million msmes right micro small medium enterprises right that are looking to engage with customers right so for us what we've seen is a huge growth uh, projected in this whole communications platform industry so a lot of people were working on multiple uh, different channels of communication right like sms voice and all and telcos were mainly taking a lead in this because this is like a telco business right but we've seen the emergence globally of a lot of third party independent companies right and that is where this whole communications platform as a service industry has come up what excites us as correro is that with this increased digitization we have seen that many enterprises including the small ones have started looking out for solutions to engage with their customers like i mentioned to you you know engaging with their customers on whatsapp 
or through you know automated calls or through sms or tomorrow through social media platforms now they also need help right in terms of you know who to use to adopt like we've seen the adoption of spice money platform by small merchants in rural india small enterprises are also looking for platforms to communicate with their customers so that is what uh, excites us as corredo to be able to build out a platform for such enterprises you know who are who are looking to engage with their customers and have a single view of the customer because today what is happening is sometimes the customer is looking at his sms looking at his whatsapp getting an outbound call getting an email so there are multiple modes in which enterprises are communicating with their customers the trend is for all this to come onto a single platform so that as a customer i don't get different messages from the same enterprise <clears throat> you know it's all coordinated so we see merchants of these platforms we've seen global players enter india to play in this space but i do believe that there's an opportunity to grow this space by entering the <clears throat> the micro and small enterprise also we have seen that uh, you know you would have seen emergence of a lot of these technology companies like spice money is a fintech you've seen every industry health tech edtech fintech lot of companies growing right so by definition their engagement with their stakeholders is on digital platforms so again they need to communicate whether it's to uh, merchants or to consumers using digital right many of these lend tech companies are offering loans for example to customers right they need to engage with them on loan payment reminders or many other things using sms using voice using whatsapp so there are many use cases that are emerging rishu and what we have done is because historically we worked very closely with telcos right we we understand how to build telco great platforms and as a result of that we thought that with this growing trend we will invest in building our own uh, you know communications platform and be able to extend the reach of this technology to smaller enterprises as much as to larger so i think for us there is significant headroom for growth rishu uh as i said during my presentation in terms of you know detailing out metrics on the corero side as well as you know uh, how the profitability could look like i think let's wait for a few quarters rishu because we are still in the process of testing the product with the customer so very honestly you know we just rolled out corero mid quarter last year uh, uh, mid quarter this year like middle of quarter 1 we've onboarded our first set of customers on the platform we're getting feedback from them on what they are liking not liking about the platform and i think going forward as we strengthen the platform we'll be able to figure out multiple revenue models and all so i think the good thing that you see rishu is that you know it's not like we are burning a lot of cash in building it out right so it's something where the headroom is more than the amount of investment we are making in the business so i think this year is going to be more investments and i think going forward next year we'll be able to more uh, more comfortably call out you know the opportunity because you know with 65 million msmes i i see a huge headroom in terms of reach out okay okay good good to hear the story and another question uh, who are our competitors in the platform business uh, uh you're talking about corero issue corero yes so you have both global and local players uh do you know so we've seen uh, many global companies come in and acquire local entities and you know who who play in this game <clears throat> we also have seen entities that are listed uh you know uh, in in this industry uh, so just to uh, just to name you know uh, one company that's listed is root mobile uh, you know in who's also playing the space globally right and then you've seen players like infobabe twilio and others uh, you know come in and uh, uh, you know uh, participate in the whole indian cpas uh industry and we've seen a lot of this happen during the pandemic period right we've seen acquisitions happen during this uh period so uh in this industry we see both global as well as uh, local uh, players building out platforms but we at corero are very excited by the opportunity that we have to grow the market you know and to serve a community that we believe is still underserved thank you thank you rishu uh, we have a question on the chat uh, i'd encourage you uh, urge you to ask for the questions if you could raise your hand please uh, we have a question on the chat from tanuj khiyani uh, what are the problems that the company is facing in terms of educating the people to use the mobile app trust of the people on this kind of technology etc 
And uh, okay, I'd like you to answer that first, and then and then you can do the second one. So, what are the problems or the challenges that you're facing? Yeah, Tanuj, I think uh, it's a great question, and thank you so much for asking this question. I think uh, uh, you know, as we are rolling out the Spice Money platform, uh, you know, into villages and small towns in in India, uh, we are seeing a lot of interest of uh, you know existing and aspiring entrepreneurs. you know people who are running their kirana stores running a small business or people who want to start a business uh you know wanting to come on board and use our platform to you know make income as well as serve their community so obviously you know in terms of adoption uh you know there is a there is a journey that we have to take uh, some of these products like cash out products are easier to use so we've seen for example after aps a very quick adoption of the micro atm product but as we move into other products there's a lot of need to educate uh, you know the adhikaris on on how to use the product and that's why our challenge on the app is to keep it as seamless as possible to make the user journey very simple for them to use uh, you know so that uh, what we've also created on the platform is for example educational videos uh, you know if you get the opportunity to see the spice money app we've created a section within the app called spice money adda uh where we publish videos on on you know how to use the product uh we also have videos from adhikaris who are using product which they can you know post and people can obs- look at it so i think a lot of the uh, challenges around educating people to be able to do multi product adoption i think that's the first challenge right then of course going forward uh you know what is very important is that you know we get into multilingual uh you know this is a journey that the app will take uh going forward because as we penetrate deep into south india uh you know we need to make the pr- platform more multilingual so you know people can uh, drive better engagement with it so that's part of the road map that we will look at uh going forward and then as we get into more complicated financial products you know like credit insurance and all uh you know i think it's very important that you know we are able to train our people and this is something that we look forward to you know figuring out how to work with the regulators also uh, so that we can increase the reach of uh, you know people being able to sell more complicated financial products how do we simplify them but also train people like training someone how to sell insurance or also how to train people to you know help us in doing credit assessment so i think you know it's a journey and in this journey uh, you know uh, we are starting with the more easier products to understand and build and then you know making sure that as we move forward we are able to you know connect with our adhikaris to be able to not only train and educate them but also get them to understand the sensitivity around financial products and how to help them you know sell products more in the market so right now it's more fulfillment products but going forward we are also looking to be able to work with our product manufacturers to deepen credit and insurance penetration into rural india so i think education uh is a big part of the journey and i think multilingual uh you know conversations is very much part of that journey in terms of driving engagement thanks lipandi and uh, tanu your second question is, is about what are your competitive advantages what do you believe are the bots and who or who do you see as your competitors across each business yeah tanu i would imagine this we are talking in the context of spice money Yes, yes. Uh, predominantly spice money and the other businesses as well but predominantly spice money yes yeah so i think uh, you know uh, for spice money i would say that uh, you know one big advantage that i uh, see is focus right uh, we have clearly called ourselves out as a rural fintech platform business and i think just that focus in itself is a big advantage because you know we are deeply vested in understanding the rural consumer and making sure that we continue to engage with entrepreneurs in rural india and build products that they can engage their customers with so i think focus is a big point and sometimes it's undermined but i believe that it's a big point in focus i think the segment that we've called out uh, which is the rural consumer segment is something that we believe has great opportunity to innovate um and many other players that we've seen in the industry uh, do you know are focusing on not only rural but also a lot of urban customers uh but we are very clearly vested in, in the rural consumer and we want to be able to build products that work for them so i think that is one big uh, uh you know competitive 
advantage focus as i see it uh, of course you know um, in this industry like any other tech industry you know you constantly have to be on your toes in terms of building out the business uh, that is why you know our focus is on growth our focus is on uh, you know building scale and uh, over time that will lead to you know effects uh, you know in in terms of benefits that we can create on products uh, in terms of products and i think the other one is that you know making sure that we we build a, a very robust technology platform that can manage scale and that can uh, you know handle scale uh, you know with large numbers so we very much focus on technology and infrastructure and and that also i believe is going to be a competitive advantage going forward in the future and finally uh, you know the brand that we are building uh, spice money we believe that not only with merchants but in consumers in rural india also we'll be able to you know differentiate ourselves over time uh, uh, through brand and i think uh, you know combination of all of this uh or uh, you know we believe will give us an opportunity to you know garner more share in the market uh but tanuj very clearly it's a grind business it's not uh, you know it's a business that you really have to work every day to build and uh, we do hope that in our journey of you know building our and reaching out to more adhikaris we will learn faster and using technology and the data infrastructure we'll be able to innovate better and faster and because of that we'll be able to build things ahead of others or even if others have built it out roll it uh, you know without much gap to make sure that we can not only gain but grow market share so i think uh, i am pretty confident that you know there is a there is an opportunity to build market share here uh, but it will take a lot of effort and uh, you know we have to we have to stay at it stay the course thanks philip we'll take the next question from ajay goel whose hand is raised ajay could you unmute yourself please Ajay, your line is unmuted. Yeah. Yeah, it is unmuted. Yeah, you could you could start. Yeah, you could voice your question, please. Okay. Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, one is, uh, are you planning to get into digital advertising space uh, in next couple of years through Digi Spice because that is again a very lucrative uh, space. Uh, because after covid uh, uh, this is one of the focus area because digitization is increasing and uh, use of digital devices are increasing so more and more uh, companies are focusing on digital advertising rather than uh, print uh, media so is there any plan to get into digital advertising in next couple of years yeah so ajay uh, absolutely i think uh, you know digital uh advertising will grow on the back of digitization and uh, growth in digitization uh i think ajay uh, for us at digi spice uh, we are always building out on future trends um you know as we roll out our new platforms uh, as we work with partners whether it's a telco or a bank or a financial service provider uh you know we are constantly looking at you know new areas that we can work with them on so i cannot uh, rule out any possibility uh, you know if it is a trend and if it's something that we can build for and build a relevant product in that space we will definitely build out uh, the product right so i think if you look at uh, the carrero platform that we are building out uh, you know it is a communications platform and many of the use cases uh, will end up being around marketing and digital marketing so you know i think you know few digital marketing use cases will get rolled out uh, you know as part of the carrero platform journey uh, but tomorrow we also have telcos who are looking at digital advertising as a space i think what is important ajay is to make sure that we at digi spice technologies are able to build out a relevant competitive product in each of these growing consumer spaces and if we can we will definitely uh, you know evaluate and accordingly plan thank you uh, my last question is uh... uh for a spice money uh because it is focused uh, for rural areas so uh, there are two main things uh, in rural one is farmers huh? agriculture loan and a lot of other stuff which we can do it for farmers and second area is education 
uh, education for children in uh, rural areas. So are we planning to introduce any product uh, in these two areas? Uh, so Ajay, I, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's very clear to us that we cannot be working in rural India and not, uh, you know, think around products in the agri uh, uh, space. So it is something that we will, uh, we will come back to you on in terms of what products and plans we have for that. Um, I think education, I, I agree with you, uh, you know, I, I think what we have to figure out, Ajay, is that, you know, what role our platform can play uh, when it comes to education in rural, right? Um, I think, uh, you know, as we've partnered with uh, Mr. Sonu Sood, uh, uh, you, know, um, uh, we, uh, you know, one of the things that I know they've been working on as part of a, a jobs platform, uh, you know, that he rolled out Parvasi Rozgar, which was meant for a lot of people who went back to their villages and were looking for jobs. And when you think of jobs, then training and education becomes part of that. So, you know, there are platforms being rolled out in rural India. I think we have to see the relevance of our Adhikari network and how such education products can be rolled out through them. So uh, we've not come to that yet, Ajay. Uh, but uh, yes, there are many such uh, underserved and, you know, um, uh, unmet needs uh, in rural India that, you know, digital platforms can cater to. So we will evaluate them. But again, Ajay, it will be based on our ability to build a relevant product and also product that can scale. Uh, because for us, scale is also very important. Uh, so while we look for new products, we also look for products that we can scale across and drive a uh, majority of our adhikaris to be able to adopt and use that product. So in both these areas, you know, if and when we build plans, uh, we'll be more than happy to share as we go forward, Ajay. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay. Uh, the next question we have, uh, which is uh, on, the, on the chat from uh, Vipul Sothalia. Uh, Vipul says, uh, thank you for talking in detail about the business model and the vision. It looks very impressive. At the same time, considering digital being the field where everyone is jumping in and there can be some big players soon, could you talk about any significant threat to the business in the medium to long term that we should be aware of and how we are getting ready to face it? to make the business truly sustainable. Uh, Vipul, thank you so much for your interest and thank you for your your question. I think it's a very, very important question, Vipul. Uh, you know, in the technology business, uh, there is nothing given and we have to constantly be on our toes. Um, in terms of threat to business, uh, Vipul, there are multiple risks to the business. Uh, we actually do not know where competition can come from, very honestly. I think, uh, you know, if I look at what we are rolling out today, we have multiple players, uh, uh, you know, trying to roll out uh, networks, uh, you know, into into small town, rural India. You know, you look at payment banks, they are trying to roll out networks. Uh, you know, uh, they have their own strategies. Uh, you know, small finance banks, of course, you know, they, they, they have evolved. Uh, but, you know, after my, doing microfinance, Lending, they move more to urban areas. Then you have a lot of tech companies, uh, you know, who are working in urban India, you know, who tomorrow may choose to want to work in rural India. So I think there are multiple, uh, you know, potential sources of competition, right? I, I think for us, uh, you know, we are very clear that, you know, we are building out a rural fintech platform business uh, where we are working around the rural consumer. So our biggest opportunity to build competitive advantage is to make sure that we uh, learn quick and, uh, you know, convert those learnings and insights into innovation and products that we can roll out on the ground. And that's what we will stay the course on. Um, I think our growth in the last, uh, uh, you know, 24 months, you know, has given us a lot of confidence that there is a big opportunity in this space and we can build for this opportunity. Um, I think a lot of players who we think could be competition, uh, you know, we are actually seeing them become partners in this journey because as we are rolling out this network, uh, many of these new age banks are becoming our partners to roll out products, um, you know, onto our platform. So I think that, uh, you know, competition and collaboration may go hand in hand. Uh, but like I said, this is a grind business and it's very important that, you know, we focus on on network growth and innovation. And I think um, those two levers are what we're going to continue to press on. 
Um, uh, as far as, you know, looking at this from an outside-in perspective, <laughs> um, I would say that we'll continue to provide uh, whatever inputs we can. And, you know, like this is one platform to do so, uh, to be able to share with you, you know, how we are doing on our journey. Um, uh, you know, and we'll try and share as much as we can, uh, you know, to keep you apprised in terms of how we are going. Uh, but yes, I think it's a long-term business, but definitely I believe that it's a business which has both growth and uh, economics, uh, you know, and I think uh, it's rare, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes not easy to find both together. And I think we definitely feel here's an opportunity to do so. Uh, but our focus initially is to make sure that we capture growth. And once we become significantly big enough in terms of network and products, um, we, we'll be able to build a lot more moats around our business. Right, the next uh, question we have is from uh, Rajiv Mehta. And uh, Rajiv, Rajiv says, uh, any plans to, jo- to launch the D2C app? Any threat from EUP? I'll go, he's got a few questions. I'll go one at a time. Sorry, Kevin. The first question is on a launch of a B2C. No, a D2C. D2C app and any ah. threat from e rupee. E-Rupee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Rajiv, on the D2C app, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have been running a couple of pilots, uh, you know, but... Uh, We've not really aggressively gone out and, and launched anything yet. Our focus is on our Adhikari platform and on scaling the, the platform. And when we think about the end consumer, I think we are going to look at it in the context of how we can help our Adhikaris drive footfall and engagement with their consumers. Because uh, as you would appreciate, Rajiv, what we are rolling out uh, is on the base, on the back of a belief that a rural consumer uh, you know, would like uh, assistance and has a certain trust and goodwill, uh, you know, that they share with people within their community. And that is why we are seeing a lot of our Adhikaris on our platform drive transactions with consumers around them. So, you know, we really want to build our business on the back of that trust and the relationship that, uh, you know, the local entrepreneur shares with the consumer. And I truly believe that can become a big competitive advantage going forward. So I think when we call ourselves a digital super app opportunity. We definitely see an opportunity where, uh, you know, we have a combination of people and technology. And therefore, whenever we think of the end consumer, we always look at them in the context of, you know, the network of Adhikaris that we are are rolling out. So whatever we do vis-a-vis the end consumer will be very much uh, closely, tightly bound uh, with our Adhikari platform to enable the Adhikari platform, uh, you know, to enable our Adhikaris to drive their earnings more and more you know, in terms of both footfall and product engagement. So I think um, that I believe will give us a unique opportunity uh, to be able to uh, build on uh, uh, this business model where we are having both technology and people come together to deliver services deep into rural India. Uh, I think as far as the e-rupee is concerned, this is a a very new and latest initiative from NPCI uh, that has been just launched. Uh, we are still going to understand and study this in detail and we're going to, uh, you know, try and get into, uh, you know, the direction in terms of the use cases that they are looking at going forward. I, I think for us, uh, you know, given what we are rolling out with uh, the Aadhaar stack, I, I think there's a significant headroom here. Uh, but yes, all these developments we will study and evaluate. I think right now we are not in a position to comment on the impact that it would have on our business. I think it's just been announced and I think we will study it uh, before we can form a view. Uh, Rajiv's next question is, uh, what percentage of business do we uh, do we think we can acquire in Correro? For Correro? So I think uh, if you look at it, uh, you know, our revenues today are significantly coming out of our fintech business. Uh, you know, close to 90% of our revenues in quarter one this year is from our fintech business. Uh, the digital technology services business is is only about 10% or 10 to 12%. So I think, uh, uh, you know, these are new build outs that we are rolling out. But like I said, uh, you know, we see a huge headroom in terms of enterprises, uh, you know, in the country. Uh, as uh, And therefore, I think there is an opportunity for us to grow. 
Now, how it will translate in terms of revenues, uh, we will have to wait and watch uh, because, uh, you know, uh, how we are able to create a, a, a channel mix and a revenue mix, we will know over the next few quarters. Uh, but yes, we are rolling out uh, the, the Corero platform with an objective that there is a market segment that we can create and grow into and uh, how it will translate in terms of percentage. I think we'll, we'll see how the overall segment grows. Uh, but yes, we do see headroom for growth in that space. And his last question is uh, with the Paytm IPO in the pipeline. Are there any plans to list Spice Money as a standalone entity? And is there an opportunity to demerge it and list it separately? That way you can raise long-term funds with global and larger investors. Uh, so Rajiv, uh, thank you uh, uh, so much uh, uh, for that suggestion. I think uh, we've seen over the last couple of weeks a flurry of uh, you know tech IPOs, filings happening. So there is a lot of... Um, uh, activity happening in the in the markets I, I think it's a validation of uh, you know the the whole tech landscape opportunity that's rolling out in india and i think we are seeing uh, first of its kind kind of companies coming to market i think at spice money also we are rolling out a unique tech led business model um, uh, you know which we think have significant legs for growth uh, we will uh, be studying what's happening in the in this whole tech IPO space. Uh, as of now, we've not uh, you know put together any formal plans uh, you know to to demerge or list separately. But we will very closely watch the uh, you know the activity in the overall tech IPO space uh, and and get some guidance in terms of how we should think about it uh, you know at Digi Spice. Uh, but um, uh, you know there's there's so much happening. Uh, that it cannot be ignored. So uh, as of now, we don't have any formal plans, but we will definitely study the space and then come back uh, once we've evaluated what it means for us in terms of raising growth capital uh, for our business. Thank you, Rajiv. Uh, our, the next question is from uh, Arpit Agarwal, who says, Agarwal, who has said, as of now, our focused revenue stream is service fee. As we as you grow, which other revenue streams are you eyeing, which would, which would become core revenue streams? As you now have a significant client base, do you think you would like to get into lending directly or with a partner? So, Arpit, I think, uh, I, I think uh, you know, while we continue to focus on network and transactions growth, I, I think transactions linked service fee and transactions linked income will continue to be our main source of income and so we will continue to to drive this because at the end of the day as i showed you on the flywheel uh, you know we we as a platform business our core uh, business is to grow transactions on our platform you know and if you lead, look at leading platforms in the world you know they always lead through transactions and engagement so i think uh, you know transactions growth is at the heart of our business model and therefore we'll continue to drive that and therefore incomes from that uh, you know, the good thing is that we have a very clear income model linked to our transactions thing. We have to just make it um, multi-product focused. So we're not skewed on a few products, uh, you know, and, and therefore we do not get hit by, uh, you know, changes in the value chains of particular products. So we have to go multi-product and grow transactions across as many relevant products as uh, uh, possible. So I think we will continue to do that. As far as new products are concerned, Arpit, very clearly, uh, as we improve our understanding of the rural ecosystem, as we are able to, uh, you know, build more connects, um, you know, with both uh, merchants and consumers, I, I think we will have an opportunity to roll out new financial products, you know, whether it's in the credit, insurance or savings space. So very clearly, it's part of the roadmap. And um, I think as we get more... Uh, data and understanding because as you know Arpit that you know the credit space is a space we have to go through go into very carefully um, you know one industry that has built out a good model in the rural credit space is the microfinance industry uh, you know they came out with a unique business model and have been able to scale and keep NPS low uh, I think at Spice Money we have done a few pilots around uh, third party credit products uh, you know uh, to our Adhikaris and we've seen some interesting insights come out of it. 
So again, credit is a long-term uh, business, but as you saw in our roadmap on products, uh, you know, it's very much part of the roadmap. Uh, how we evolve it in terms of our business model, uh, we will come back and share with you, Arpit, as, as we, you know, learn from our pilots and do our own, uh, uh, you know, product strategy and, 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 you know, finalize our product plans for that space. So we will come back and share, but needless to say, it's very much part of the journey as we go forward. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, we have no further questions. Uh, so we could conclude the call if, you, if you'd like to uh, share some final remarks regarding Outlook or regarding the call, and we could then close. Okay. Well, let, let me, let me thank, uh, everyone once again for, for taking time out to join us this afternoon. Uh, you know, we are a very young company, uh, as DigiSpice Technologies, uh, you know, uh, we are, we are still at a very early stage of our journey. As you can see, many of our platforms are at a very early stage of build out. Uh, we, uh, I would just assure you that we at, uh, you know, across all the segments, that we work in, whether that's Spice Money, Guerrero, or in our telco business, are deeply committed to the journey we are on. Uh, we will learn a lot as we go forward. There will be a lot of challenges that we face on the ground. Nothing is given, and we will see, you know, impact on on our numbers because of that. Uh, but we'll continue to stay committed and continue to stay on course. Uh, we truly believe in the journey we are on, and as a management team, we are committed to it. I thank you all for your support and advice and insights that you provide us through these platforms. Uh, and I look forward to your guidance um, as we go forward. Um, and I do hope that we can build a relevant, impactful journey at DigiSpice Technology, something that, you know, all of us can benefit from, particularly in terms of the impact that we can create on the ground, both for enterprises and consumers. So thank you very much for your time and your interest in our company. Thank you. Thank you, Dilip. Thank you, everyone, for joining.